So the first thing you need to ask yourself when considering which book to start with when getting into philosophy is, why do you want to read philosophy? Um, I assume that if you're watching this, you kind of probably have a vague idea of why you want to read philosophy or what sort of books you're interested in, what sort of problems you're interested in reading about. But I want you to really think about this uh, at the outset here so that we can try to inform which book you start with. Because I assume for a lot of the people watching this, it might be the first philosophy book that they've ever actually read that they're looking for here. So it's really fundamental that we ask ourselves first what our purpose is so that we can work out which book will get us to that purpose. So I think each book that I recommend here will fall more or less in line with what you might be interested in. Um, and so I recommend watching until the very end so that you can see all of the different options that I'm giving here and then you can figure out which book is most relevant to you. Before we get into things, my name is Ethan. I'm a philosophy student and aspiring philosopher. I make videos on all things philosophy. If that sounds interesting to you, make sure to subscribe and like the video. With that out of the way, let's get straight into things. My first recommendation is The History of Philosophy by A.C. Grayling. So this book is similar to another really popular introductory book called The History of Western Philosophy by someone called Bertrand Russell. Um, A.C. Grayling's version is kind of an updated, clearer version of that book. He expanded upon it, gave you some more modern people as well who came after Russell wrote that book, and ultimately just improved it, in my opinion. I think he makes it a lot more approachable. So this book will give you a really good overview of the different movements within philosophy, and it will help you to start learning some of the important names, some of the important philosophers, and why they're important, what they're kind of about. So this will then help you more concretely decide which direction you want to go in after reading this book. And a really good way to go through this book is to kind of just skim it. And when something interesting comes up, that, that's when you read the full thing. But you don't need to read everything out of every single philosopher unless you really want to, unless you're interested particularly in the history of philosophy and looking at that kind of genealogy. But if you're just looking for something to find interesting, you can just kind of skim it and then stop when you find the interesting bits. This is really perfect if you don't know what you want to read, or if you want a broad overview of philosophy as a whole. The next book which I'm going to recommend is The Problems of Philosophy by Bertrand Russell, who we were just discussing before. So this is a really excellent book if you want to get your hands a little bit more dirty, and if you know that you're interested in analytic philosophy in particular. So this one is another which will give you a really broad overview of philosophy, but it goes more in terms of the sorts of questions that philosophers ask and are looking to answer. And so this is a really good way to kind of get yourself thinking about the problems of philosophy. And it can be used a little bit like an exercise book where Russell has given his own thoughts to some extent, but he also leaves it open enough that you can then go away and try to figure out what you think about these problems, which is really cool, and I think it's really valuable for any philosopher, anyone trying to get into philosophy in general. I will say it's a little bit denser than the previous one, but it's certainly manageable for beginners, and it will equip you really well to read more philosophy, particularly more analytic philosophy, and it will also give you a good starting point, a good jumping off point, to then look further into these questions which Russell discusses. The next book which I'm going to recommend is Meditations on First Philosophy by René Descartes. So Descartes is regarded as the father of modern philosophy. Essentially, you have the early Greeks, and then you had the Middle Ages, and then you had the Enlightenment, and this is when Descartes started. He started right at the start. And essentially, all modern philosophy comes after Descartes and is in some way a response to Descartes, you could say. Not all of it, but a lot. And the main things which you might be interested in, which Descartes discusses here, are things around like what exists and how we can know those things. It's a really good introduction to a kind of skeptical philosophical methodology. And it's really foundational in further discussions around things like the self, so if you're interested in philosophy of mind, uh, the external world, and also just metaphysics broadly. Whilst 
Descartes certainly didn't get everything right, and there's a lot within this book which philosophers subsequent to him have really heavily disagreed with him on, and most people think he doesn't succeed in certain elements of this book. It's a really excellent choice if you're interested in Enlightenment-era philosophy in particular, and also if you're interested in those sorts of epistemic questions I talked about before, and also things around ontology, so just to clarify in case you're not aware, epistemology is around questions of knowledge, ontology is around questions of what exists. So both of these things are addressed by Descartes here, and it's a really good starting point to start thinking about those sorts of questions. The fourth book I'm going to recommend is Practical Ethics by Peter Singer. If you're interested in ethical questions, then this is a really good starting point. Essentially, it's written in a really approachable way, and it contains discussions of a lot of problems which we talk about in our day-to-day -day lives around ethics, things like abortion and animal rights, which are really hotly contested in the broad world, and this gives you a good philosophical view of those problems. Now, Singer obviously does uh, give it all from his perspective, he, he outlines his arguments around these topics, but it does then set you up, of course, to think about his arguments and to try to refute them, try to come up with the reasons why he might be wrong, and he also lays out some of the key ideas around things like meta-ethics, so why we should think about ethics in a particular way, what a good ethical theory might look like, and he also introduces some of the key ethical theories of the modern age. He talks about deontology, he talks a little bit about relativism and why he thinks it doesn't work, and it's a really interesting and approachable book if you want to get started in discussing ethics from a philosophical perspective. The fifth book that I'm going to recommend is The Apology by Plato. So this is a really great start if you're interested in Greek philosophy and you want to learn the classics. This is a dialogue about the trial of Socrates, and it captures the style of thought which was common in that era. It goes through the sorts of ways that they talked about problems, and it is a really great way to get yourself immersed in that world that Plato was living in. So if you want to th read things like The Republic, this is a really good starting point because it gives you a good foundation for reading his dialogues and reading that style of philosophy. And it also gives you a nice basis to then go and read philosophers like, say, Aristotle. Now, I purposefully recommend reading Plato first because Aristotle is a lot more difficult a person to read. He is a lot more scientific, I suppose, in his approach, is a lot more thorough, and so he can be a little bit more difficult to understand and a little bit more difficult to read. You need to be a lot more careful with him. Whereas Plato, because he provides his thoughts in the form of a dialogue, it's more like reading a discussion between two people, and so it's a lot easier to get into, I think. So by reading this work, you essentially equip yourself to read a lot of the other Greek philosophers, and you also get a brief introduction to a couple of the main philosophical problems which are still debated today, so it's a really great starting point, I think. Sixth, I'm going to recommend On the Shortness of Life by Seneca. Now, I know a lot of people will be interested in Stoicism, and that's why they are interested in philosophy, that's what they mean when they say they are interested in philosophy, and I think that this is actually the perfect book to start with. A lot of people might recommend uh, starting with Marcus Aurelius, and I think that that's a fine recommendation, but Seneca's a better philosopher, he's a lot more lucid a thinker, and he ultimately is a lot more compelling, I think, in providing reasoning for his thoughts. Whereas Marcus Aurelius more just kind of says what he thinks, Seneca is better at arguing for what he thinks. Seneca presents many of the main ideas in Roman Stoicism in this book uh, in a really accessible way, and I think it's the best of the Stoic books, to be honest, anyway. It's also a really short book, which I think is a point in its favour. If you're interested in problems around how you ought to live your life uh, on a day-to-day -day basis and you want to look into kind of more actionable, practical philosophy, I think this is a great start. The final book I'm going to recommend is What is Existentialism by Simone de Beauvoir. So if you're interested in existential thought, so that is thought around finding meaning in a meaningless world and that sort of a thing, then this is a really good starting point. Now, I agree with people who would argue that things like Nausea or The Stranger are better introductions to the movement as a whole. However, I think if you're looking to actually read philosophical texts, then what is existentialism is the better pick, simply because it's an actual philosophy book versus a novel. So 
if you want to read books like uh, Being in Nothingness, The Ethics of Ambiguity, or Being in Time, this is a good place to start before you get into those way more complicated and dense books. Beauvoir excellently captures many of the important ideas and concepts of existentialism, and she does so again in a really concise way, which I think adds points in her favour for this one. If you're someone who's interested in existentialism, you've heard a little bit about it, this is a really good starting place. Particularly if you have actually read those novels, if you've read The Stranger in High School or something and you want to know where to go from there, I think this is a good starting place. Perhaps another good starting place, I know I'm kind of cheating here, another good starting place might be Existentialism is a Humanism by Sartre, but I think What is Existentialism is a bit more approachable and a more interesting read as well. Some further recommendations I'll give you around starting out your philosophical journey is that First off, it can really help to try to read shorter texts. One good way to do this when you're looking for philosophical books is looking for collections of essays or letters. Two really classic examples of this might be The Essays by Michel de Montaigne or Letters from a Stoic by Seneca. Both of these contain a lot of really short little texts, which means that you can more easily pass them, you can reread them a couple of times, and you can work on just passing what has been said and figuring out the actual arguments that are going on. I would recommend here as well, as you're reading these books, read slowly, underline the key points. Again, you don't need to read all of a philosophical book, you can skip around a little bit, but do be aware that you might miss key things which are setting up further argumentation later on. So just be aware of that, but for things like the history of philosophy by Grayling, you can skip around a little bit more. It, it depends a little bit on the text, of course, but with a lot of philosophical books, you can just skip to the area that you care about, just so long as you also are aware that there might be things that are set up justifying some of the points that are made within that section. Following on from this, I would say don't be afraid to look for help in understanding some of these books, because they are quite complicated often. ChatGPT is a great tool here. You can use it to help summarize chapters, you can use it to help understand what different words mean, and you can also look for online chapter summaries, that can be really helpful. I would say as well, as you do this, as you read through these books, it can be really helpful to write summaries of what you've been reading, so write chapter summaries. As you summarize, you should include not just what is being said, but you should also include what you think about what is being said. This can be kind of time consuming, but it makes you a better philosopher if you can say, I think this about what's being said, and you don't just kind of take it and go, well, this is what they think, and leave it at that. That's not being a philosopher. Being a philosopher means you have to respond to what other philosophers have said. So the earlier you can start doing that, even if you do a bad job of it, it's still getting you into that philosophical mindset, which I think is really helpful. A habit which is super useful around this is, while you're reading, try to figure out what are they trying to convince you of, and what reasons are they giving for convincing you of this. So this essentially, in philosophical terms, is you're looking for the conclusion that they're trying to provide, and then you're looking for the premises which lead to that conclusion. And by writing this out, and by working this out, you set yourself up to be able to dissect arguments in a lot better a way, in a lot more systematic a way, um, and ultimately it means that you can be better at analysing what's been said, it can really help your understanding as well, and it can help you identify what assumptions are being had and that sort of a thing, which is really crucial in philosophy. Thank you very much for watching, click on this video here to watch more philosophical content, catch you in the next one, peace.